Okay. Welcome everyone. Thanks for attending. It's great to see so many wonderful faces. We're going to go ahead and record this so that if anyone couldn't make it or if anyone wants to view it later, um, they will have that capability. And Alex graciously mentioned as well that she is happy to share her slides afterwards. So if you need, need any of that, we'll have it. It will be coming. Um, before we jump into it, Alex, I'm just going to mention that for our 2023 programming, we are still looking for venues. Um, there are a few different things that we're going to be trying out in 2023, such as a 4.30 p.m. Um, in-person seminar, and that'd be a really great opportunity if you have a conference room or an agency or something that you'd like to show off, we would love to come and see it. So if you have um, any availability, please feel free to contact me, throw it in the chat. I can throw my email in the chat as well. Um, we have two more programming. Pro programs, excuse me, coming up in 2022. The first is on November 9th, it's Maximize the Value of Video to Boost Your Comm Strategy. And that's up on our website, prsawis.org. And then on December 8th, we have our annual PR Palooza. And that's our annual celebration and all member meeting where we elect um, uh, the new board and then we celebrate. <laughs> it's always a lot of fun. So for that event, we are still looking for sponsors and raffle items as well. So if you have any of that, we would love to have it. Again, I'll throw my email in the chat. So feel free to um, reach out to me or on our website as well. And then finally for 2023, we are looking for board members. So if you're interested in giving, getting involved, um, helping out this really fun crew, we are ready for you. So again, feel free to reach out and we would love to have you. Uh, that being said, I'm gonna throw it over to Alex who is an account manager at Firebee. She's handled social media and influencing influencer marketing campaigns for a variety of brands, including the PGA Tour, Lyft and UPTV, UpTV. Up TV, yes. Thank you. Uh, she also <laughs> once served as a security guard for Steph Curry. How cool. So welcome, Alex. Thank you. <laughs> yes, not something you would expect from someone that was five foot one, maybe not the best duty to put on me, but um, hi, everybody. It's super excited to join you all today. Um, as mentioned, going to be talking all things TikTok advertising. Um, we're going to walk through kind of who's on the platform, what options you have, We'll walk through really quickly how to set up a campaign, um, and then we'll open um, the floor for questions. If you have any questions along the way, feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, I'll also be um, happy to share my contact information if anybody has any follow-up questions after the fact. Perfect. Um, so yes, my name is Alex. I am currently an account manager at Firebee. Uh, we are an Atlanta-based marketing agency, um, and I've been with the team for four years now. Prior to joining Firebee, I worked with the PGA Tour, um, where I created digital content for them, as well as did some media relations and spotlighted as a bodyguard for Steph Curry during a press conference. Um, in my current role at Firebee, I oversee our digital team. Um, so any digital campaigns come through me. Um, have had the chance to do some really fun ones um, for some brands you might have heard of, including Orange Theory Fitness, who we did um, some pretty extensive TikTok work with, um, Dogtopia, and Mitsubishi Electric Classic. I am also a huge TikTok connoisseur. Um, I bought my first house last October, so my algorithm is full of TikTok um, DIY projects. I also recently got engaged, so now I've got a lot of wedding DIY projects. Um, but before we move on, we'd just love to hear in the chat um, how many of you all have TikTok, if you have downloaded the app or you use it regularly. As people are kind of dropping that in. Um, if you are putting in or you are virtually raising your hand as a TikTok user, would it surprise you um, that you are one of over a billion active monthly users on TikTok? Um, if that number sounds insane, it's because it is. Um, it puts it in one of the in the top three really of social media apps, um, which is especially crazy considering it is one of the newest um, apps out there in terms of social media. Um, so when it comes to who is on TikTok, it's definitely an interesting audience. 61% um, of users identify as female, so it does skew a little heavily female. 
Um, the primary age range is 10 to 29. Um, so it definitely makes it a great spot if you are trying to reach a younger audience um, with whatever your product or service is. TikTok is also available in over 150 countries right now. So it's really great if you wanna reach a large audience or global audience. Um, and there are 39 active languages and currently three different languages supported by its um, automatic captions feature. So a really interesting audience mix, um, but I'd say what really makes TikTok's audience unique is that um, for the most part, they have discretionary income and they come on the app ready to purchase. Um, so love hearing that there are people who have dabbled in TikTok. I'm sure you can um, account for this too, that you've seen probably products on TikTok that have piqued your interest um, and you're not alone. So 40.2% of US TikTok users report a household income of over $100,000. Um, so what this means for you um, is that you're reaching people who have the discretionary income to um, purchase a product of yours, maybe subscribe to your service, whatever it might be. But even more so than that, like I mentioned, they come ready to buy. So 49% of users report having purchased something they've seen on the app. Um, if you keep up with industry news, I'm sure you've also seen lately, um, there have been a lot of news stories about how TikTok is really becoming the new Google. Um, I can attest to this. I've definitely gone to TikTok um, when I'm looking for certain products or um, a solution to a certain problem. I will TikTok it instead of Google it. Um, and a lot more people are doing this too. So it really makes it a great place to advertise your business, your products, um, because people are ready to be influenced. Um, these actually, these two photos here are screenshots of two TikToks that um, influenced me to purchase some stick on nails as well as some Amazon home finds. So now that we've gone over who is on TikTok, um, I think it's best for us to start by talking about how you can reach those people. Uh, so TikTok really does offer a lot of different targeting capabilities, starting with the location. So on TikTok, you can target by country, by state, or by DMA. Um, if anybody is on this call that has run a digital paid digital campaign on another platform, you might notice here that radius targeting is missing. Um, unfortunately, right now you can't target by a zip code or an address, um, or even some smaller cities are not an option on TikTok, which does make this a little difficult if you have a very localized product, service, or you're trying to send someone to your brick and mortar location. Um, paid TikTok advertising might not be the right option for now. Um, I will say we have been assured by many TikTok reps that they are working on kind of that more specific targeting option um, and that they're hoping to roll it out by 2023. So in addition to location, you also have some demographic options. This includes um, gender, age, language, as well as um, TikTok recently added in an income feature. So this will target people based on um, the top X percent, so 10, 15, 25% of incomes based on zip codes. Um, so these can be really great to help you build um, a really niche audience that matches your customer base um, or the people that you're trying to reach with your message. Your next option is going to be interest-based targeting. Um, this is where a bulk of your audience is going to be built really under this option. Um, and this is something that TikTok is constantly refining and adding new things. So the first option is going to be video topics. So this is what kind of videos are the users watching often. Um, for um, Orange Theory Fitness, when we were running campaigns for them, often we would target people who are regularly watching videos about fitness or watching videos about um, just like wellness and health because we knew those are likely people who are going to be interested in joining a gym. Um, another option here is common channel topics. So this is um, of the people that they're subscribed to, what kind of commonalities are in them? Are they subscribed to a lot of comedians? If so, maybe you, know, you wanna reach them with an ad for a comedy show. Um, for Dogtopia, something we did was, okay, you know, these people are subscribed to a lot of content talking about how to care for your dog. Let's go ahead and target them. Next is gonna be hashtag targeting. This is one of TikTok's newest options and it's exactly what it sounds like. 
Um, you can insert a hashtag, maybe that's specific to your business or product. And then you can, tar um, then TikTok will target those people who regularly engage with that hashtag with your ad. And finally, behavior. Um, so on all of these interests, you can get pretty specific um, in terms of what it looks like. So maybe you want to reach somebody who has watched a video on fitness in the past 30 days or somebody who has liked a video. Um, you can get really granular with your interests. Um, real quick before I go to devices, I see Katie Flanagan asked, whose DMA is TikTok using? Great question. I believe most of them are the Nielsen DMAs. Um, so when you put them in, you'll be able to see if it's an option um, in the targeting range. So next up is devices. Um, so this includes what device they're viewing TikTok on. Maybe it's a tablet versus a phone. Um, their connection type. So are they on Wi-Fi or 5G? Their operating system. This can be really great if you are promoting an app that's only available for Apple or Android, um, or for some reason has one of those limitations. You can reach people who are only using um, the operating system you need to get. And then mobile carrier. Um, so I personally am a T-Mobile user. Um, I've gotten several TikTok ads in the past um, about T-Mobile Tuesdays or from T-Mobile Tuesday providers. Um, so this one can be pretty helpful too if you're trying to get very specific. And then your final option is uploading custom lists. Um, this personally is one of my favorite um, ways to go about reaching people for a paid digital campaign. Um, but I definitely recommend if you're just getting started to test both an interest audience as well as a custom audience, um, just to see what works best. Sometimes um, data can be a little limited when it comes to custom lists. But custom lists can be a couple of different things. So the first is a customer list. Um, if maybe you have a product or a service um, where people tend to be repeat purchasers, you can upload your customer list to TikTok. TikTok will then match those emails to profiles and serve your ads to them. So it can be really great in those um, instances. It can also be really helpful if maybe you have a list of people who showed interest but didn't convert and you wanna reach them again with additional messaging. Um, you can also create lookalike audiences. So um, this can be done directly through TikTok's platform. Once you've been running ads for a little bit, you can have TikTok um, kind of look at what the people who have um, engaged with your ads have in common and create an audience based on that um, to target similar people. So now that we've talked about who's on TikTok and we've talked about how to reach them, it's time to talk about what to reach them with. So TikTok offers five main um, types of ads, and they're all, as you'll see, very different um, and, you know, really depends on what your overall goal for your campaign is. So the first one, this one here on the far end, are going to be top view ads. Um, for those of you who have used TikTok before, you've definitely been served one of these. Um, it pops up as soon as you open the app. Um, it's almost impossible to click away, and you do have kind of a full screen experience to work with. So in this screenshot example here from Balenciaga, you can see that once I clicked on the ad, it took me to kind of the shopping page that's still inside of the app. Um, so a lot of screen real estate, it can be really beneficial because you're getting a captive audience that really can't go anywhere for a couple seconds. These ads can last up to 60 seconds. And it's no surprise that these are the most engaged with of um, all five ad formats. Like I mentioned, they're the first thing that pops up when people open the TikTok app. Um, and a lot of times you have to watch at least a little bit of it before you can skip out. That being said, because it is so well engaged with and it is such a big experience, these are going to cost you the most of any of the um, ad formats. Um, these can cost up to a million plus. It really just depends um, as you'll see with some of these more um, extensive or intricate ad formats, um, you really have to reach out to a TikTok rep to get specific pricing. They aren't very transparent on those, um, but these are going to be the most expensive. Next up are going to be in feed ads. If you've used TikTok, these are the ones you're probably the most familiar with. They come up just as a user is scrolling through their feed. Um, and honestly, they look exactly like a regular TikTok. Um, I have definitely scrolled past in feed ads and watched them before I realized that they were an ad, um, which makes them really great. So they're really native feeling. 
Um, they used to have a 60 second maximum, I believe. I checked this morning, it's a little higher now, but still pretty short. Um, but these are of the five, they rank the highest in terms of user favorability. And that's because like I mentioned, they really do feel like a, um, just a organic TikTok post that someone is getting served in their feed. The only difference is you can see this one has kind of that show now button, which you normally don't see on a TikTok. Um, but these are really great because people do, they are very native compared to like a Facebook ad where it's very clear that you're scrolling past an ad. These are also one of the most affordable. Um, TikTok used to have a $500 campaign minimum, but they have now moved that down to 280. Um, so it's really easy to get in. Um, usually the cost per view is pretty low too. Um, we were getting a cost per click by the end of our campaign of around like um, anywhere from 40 to 90 cents, depending on the market. Um, so these can be just a really affordable way to get into the TikTok advertising space. Next up, we have Spark ads. These are very similar to in-feed ads. They look the same. They really feel the same. The only difference is that they're going to be created by someone else and then run as an ad by you. So you can think of this as a really great way to amplify any influencer partnerships that you have um, or third-party partnerships that you have um, to get money behind them. These have the highest completion rate of any TikTok ad format. Um, so people tend to watch these through to the end, um, sometimes repeat watch them. This is often because it does feel even more native than the in-feed ads since it does appear, um, as you can see here, it just looks like um, a, you know, influencer's ad or an influencer's post in your feed. Um, this is a similar campaign minimum. It's you set them up the same way as in feed ads. Um, so both of these formats are really easy for you to just get started right away. You don't have to worry about working with a TikTok rep or getting set up or anything like that. Next up is a branded hashtag challenge. So this is a really fun way to invite people to participate in your brand or your campaign while also getting content that you can then repurpose. Um, so as you can see here, if you take part in a branded hashtag challenge, um, your challenge will show up on the trending se section of the hashtag screen on TikTok. You'll get a lot of screen real estate. Um, as you can see in this example, you'll be able to upload a photo um, that goes along with your challenge or product. You'll be able to write out what the hashtag is. You'll be able to um, provide a link to send people to your campaign landing page or your website. You'll be able to provide a blurb that tells a little bit about the background of what your campaign is or your product is, as well as the challenge. And then you'll have another op opportunity to link people to send them out. And then people who are watching this will be able to really easily scroll through people who have created videos using your hashtag um, and they can join really easily. They can just click on that um, pink button and as soon as they complete the video um, recording process, TikTok will automatically put your hashtag in their um, caption for them. Of the five options, this does have the highest return on ad spend. As you can imagine, you're getting a lot of visibility with this, um, with this purchase. You're getting a lot of screen real estate um, and you're getting an opportunity for people to actually interact with your brand in a way that can be really meaningful. Um, for those of you who have been on TikTok or even who haven't, I'm sure you've heard about all of the challenges. It's what TikTok kind of was created on. It's what it's gained its popularity for. Um, so these can be really beneficial in terms of ROI. These are a little expensive. Um, like I mentioned, this is one of those where you'll need to reach out to a TikTok rep um, to get an exact quote because pricing does depend on when you plan on running your challenge, how long you plan on running your challenge. Um, but these tend to start around 150000 And then the final format is going to be what's called a branded effect challenge. So it's similar to the branded hashtag challenge. This is another really fun way to get people to participate, um, to really take an active role in whatever it is you're promoting. Um, these um, appear as um, overlays or video effects that people can add to their TikToks. In this example, this was from a public health organization in Illinois during COVID. Um, they had this kind of 
fun game where you batted away um, certain things and grabbed certain things to score points. Um, and so people would make videos using that, um, which is just a really fun way to kind of get people engaged in whatever it is you're trying to promote. These are also a really great way to get user generated content. Um, so as you can imagine, a lot of people are posting things that are branded with your brand. Um, great to then reshare across your channels. Because these don't have as much um, real estate as a hashtag challenge, you're not gonna have that same landing page. These are a little bit more affordable. Um, they tend to start about at about $45,000. Um, real quick, before I move on, I will say if you are looking at all of these and you're like, wow, you know, TikTok really makes sense for us, but we just really don't have any budget set aside right now um, to run any paid campaigns. I still would definitely recommend looking to see if there are creators you can partner with on the platform. Um, while sometimes these do require a fee, there are a lot of smaller micro influencers on the platform um, that may be willing to do it for free or for trade. Um, so you might be able to send them some swag, or maybe offer them an experience in exchange for them promoting your product. Um, even if you don't have the paid dollars to put behind it to turn it into something like a Spark ad, um, it still can be a really great way to reach a new audience um, and get them either interested in your product or even just aware of your services. So now that we've talked through the different types of ads, wanted to take some time to walk you through how to actually create and launch your first TikTok campaign. Um, so something that's really great about TikTok, something I personally really appreciate about the platform is that it is incredibly user-friendly. Um, setting a, up a campaign is very intuitive. Um, they've even made some changes over the past few months to make it even easier for you, um, which is really great. I know sometimes um, starting out on a new platform can be really intimidating, um, but they've really done a good job of making it as, um, as approachable as possible. So when you launch a campaign, the first thing you're going to do is select your objective. As you can see here, they fall under seven. There are seven different options that fall under three major buckets. The first is going to be awareness. So if you are looking to simply reach as many people as possible, um, you just want to get the word out there about your service or product, reach is going to be the best bet for you. Under consideration, there are a couple of different options. So if you're looking to send people to a website or to a landing page, um, traffic is a great way to do that. Same if you're looking to send them to a specific destination on an app. Video views, this is if you're looking to really get your video seen and engaged with a lot. If that's really your main goal, you're like, hey, I've got this great video, we want people to see it, um, this is gonna be your option. Next is lead generation. Um, this is a newer option on TikTok. Um, all of this is handled within the app, um, which makes it really convenient for people to kind of fill out their information and really easy for you to then download your leads. And then finally under consideration, this is the newest option from TikTok, and it is gonna be community interaction. So if you're looking to really put money behind growing your TikTok page, uh, maybe it's getting followers or more profile visits, this is going to be the option for you. I will note um, on that same end, you do not need to have a TikTok account to run TikTok ads. This is a little different than Facebook or Instagram where you do have to at least have a business profile to run them from. Um, with TikTok, you do not need to have an active profile or even have created a business profile to run ads. This can be really helpful if any of you are on small teams and you maybe don't have the resources to regularly create content for this platform organically. Or if TikTok just doesn't really make sense for you all to have an active presence on, you can still run ads on the platform. So your final bucket is going to be the conversion bucket. Um, first up is app promotion. So if you are promoting an app and you're looking to have more people install it um, or website conversion. So if you're looking to have people take specific actions on your website, um, this is going to be the option for you. I will say for website conversions, you do need to have the TikTok pixel downloaded on your website, um, but it is a really easy code they walk you step by step through how to put it in. 
Um, and if your website is hosted on something like a Wix or a Squarespace or WordPress, um, there's a plugin already in that you can use um, to get that pixel installed. So once you've set up your campaign, you've got all the details on the back end, um, then it's time to create your ad group. So this is where you're going to choose um, what you're promoting, as well as what placements um, you would like your ads to run on. Um, while you can select placements, maybe you only want it on TikTok and not on the TikTok audience network. I would highly recommend always selecting automatic placements here um, because that's going to allow TikTok's AI to go in and really make the most effective use of your budget. This is also where you're going to put in that targeting information we talked about earlier. So you'll create your audience here. And as you can see over here to the right, as you're building your audience, um, this little bar will change um, and it'll tell you the size of your audience, as well as if you're too broad or too narrow or in that perfect spot. For this screenshot, I had no information in, which is why the number is so large and why the audience is fairly broad. Um, but it's really helpful to have that in so that you can kind of see as you're putting in interests, um, kind of what that size looks like. On this screen too, you'll set your budget. Um, so you can do either a daily budget or a lifetime budget for your campaign. If you are doing a daily budget, TikTok requires um, a minimum of $20 per day for your spend um, and then $280 for that lifetime budget option. Um, I will say the daily can be a little more beneficial if you're looking to pace out the spending of your campaign. Sometimes with lifetime budgets, we've had the experience in the past um, where TikTok has kind of run through them quickly. Um, so if it's something where, you know, you're really trying to pace out your campaign, um, would definitely recommend looking into a daily budget. And then the final thing you'll set on the screen is going to be your bidding and optimization. So this is where you can set things like a maximum bid per view or a maximum bid per click. Similar to the placements, I definitely recommend selecting um, automatic bidding. This will let TikTok's algorithm and AI do all of the work for you. Um, and they tend to be a little more, a little more um, efficient when it comes to the auction pricing. And then finally, if you want your ads to run um, for a certain time, this is where you'll also set the schedule. So once you've set up your ad group, now it's time to actually create your ad. Um, so as you can see here, this is where, um, if you are running one of those Spark ads, you would be able to turn that on right here. Next, you're going to set what's called your brand identity. So you can see uh, um, there's a drop down here. So if you're advertising, if you maybe work for an agency and you're going to be advertising on behalf of multiple brands, you can create multiple um, brand identities. Same if maybe you are at a brand that has different branches um, and you're looking to um, advertise for all of them, you can create different identities. What an identity is, is it is essentially the information that's over here. So it includes the profile photo that will show up, as well as the name that will show up on the handle. Um, so like I mentioned, you do not need to have a TikTok account to run ads. You can see you just put that information in here so that it appears um, like it is your profile. Then you're going to um, actually create your ad. So this is where you're going to upload videos. Um, if you have creative already in the TikTok system, TikTok can also create one for you, but I would definitely recommend creating one on your own. Um, in addition, there's this is where you're going to put any text that you want to show up. Um, a note here, TikTok used to be limited to only about 80 characters. They have upload, updated that to 280 characters. So you have a little bit more room to work with, but for those who are familiar with the platform, um, you know it is a very video first platform. A lot of people don't read the captions at all. Um, so it's still definitely good practice to keep that caption nice and short and sweet. You'll also be able to put in a URL there. As you can see here, this will eventually turn into a button um, based on what call to action you have that will send people to whatever site or app you're linking to. As you're adding in all of this um, for your ads, this preview to the right will automatically update for you so you can see in real time what everything looks like for your ad. 
Um, this is also where you'll put in any tracking information, UTMs, all of that fun stuff. So when it comes to actually creating your ad, wanted to share just some best practices and things to keep in mind. So while TikTok recently updated their maximum length, I believe we're around 10 minutes now, which is wild. Um, we still see the most success uh, and the platform in general sees the most success with those quick short hit videos. Um, so would definitely recommend you keeping your ad from um, about 15 to 60 seconds. You're going to want vertical videos in a 9 by 16 ratio. Um, this is because you want a video that's going to take up that whole screen. Like I mentioned, we want these to be nice and short. People who are scrolling through TikTok um, tend to have a pretty short attention span on the platform. I'm definitely one of those. So with that in mind, you want to make sure you are grabbing attention within the first few seconds. Um, so you're doing something that really grabs people right away, keeps them from scrolling past, and keeps them engaged. Another great way to keep them engaged once you have their attention for those first few seconds is to make sure your video includes several different point of views or scene changes. So even if you're just, you know, talking to your camera, having a couple different backgrounds um, will at least keep people engaged and watching your video. I'm sure you have heard this as well. TikTok is a very audio platform. So unlike a lot of other platforms where people might be scrolling through with the sound off, most TikTok users listen with the sound on. So definitely recommend having upbeat music or sound effects added to your video. This will help it fit the general um, aesthetic of organic TikToks um, and will also help with that just like attention grabbing. Um, I alluded to this earlier, but TikTok does have an automatic captions feature. Um, this is really helpful for those people who do um, use the app with a sound app or who are hard of hearing. Um, and also, once they create the captions, you can go in and edit it so you don't have to worry about an AI not getting every word correctly. So I would definitely recommend if you have a voiceover um, in your ad to make sure to add those captions. Next, um, it can be really effective to use text overlays to highlight whatever your call to action is. Like I mentioned, a lot of people are not paying attention to the caption on TikTok. Um, so including it in the video where you can is super helpful. When we were running ads for Orange Theory Fitness, something we regularly had was at the end of the video, um, a big copy overlay that promoted whatever we had going on at that month, whether it was a free class um, or a discounted membership. Another thing to keep in mind when you're creating your videos is that on TikTok, um, a lot of the screen real estate around the edges is taken up by things like the caption, your like and share button, and the profile photo. So you wanna make sure that any important elements you have are centered in the screen so they don't get cut off by any of those buttons. And then finally, you wanna make sure your content feels authentic. I know authentic sounds very buzzwordy, um, but it's really important here um, as it's really what makes TikTok stand apart from a lot of different apps right now. Um, the ads or even just the regular content on TikTok tends to be a lot less polished um, than what you might see on Instagram Reels or Facebook. Um, it tends to be a lot more just um, authentic and raw. Um, I will say there is a caveat here. You definitely want to make sure that in addition to feeling authentic to the platform, you're also feeling authentic to your brand. Um, not every brand is in Auntie Anne's or uh, Chipotle where they really thrive on like meme culture um, and videos that really feel um, unedited. Um, you want to make sure that whatever you're creating still feels um, authentic and aligns with your brand. So um, last thing I wanted to cover here before I turn it over to any questions you all have um, is really about measuring success. So once you launch a campaign, as any um, professional knows, you want to make sure that your campaign is running well, um, that it's running effectively, that you're doing all that you can to make any changes or tweaks along the way. So similarly to how TikTok's actual ad platform is really user-friendly, um, their reporting platform is really user-friendly as well. 
This is an example of a dashboard that you can see inside of the platform. All of this is customizable, so you can move things, you can adjust them. Um, you can get really specific with what you want to report on. Um, you can see you have just kind of a general summary at the top. You can see what you've spent that day, as well as how many campaigns you have running, how many ads, and how many ad groups. If there are any suggestions TikTok has for how to improve your campaign, you'll see those here. And then you'll have an overview um, like trend graph that you can then customize based on the metrics that are most important to your campaign. So you can see here, these are showing the cost over time, the impressions over time, the clicks over time, as well as the cost per click over time. Um, but if there are more important metrics to you, maybe you wanna see video views or how many people are watching all of your video, it's really easy to just select from these drop downs and pick what you would like. You can also change the time period over to the right. So if you want to look at a monthly um, or even a weekly, you can do that as well. And then finally down here, there are some additional things that you can break out by. Um, so if you're interested in the demographics of who's viewing your ads, um, their gender or their age, you can look at that as well as just different campaign metrics. Um, you can also export Excel reports um, that show your TikTok um, performance, campaign performance. Um, you can also set those to be automatically pulled for a certain time period. Um, so we used to pull weekly ones. We just set it up weekly, um, which was really helpful. So with that, I will open the floor to any questions you all have on TikTok. Um, we can start out with this one that I saw from Katie Flynn again. So Katie, I see, will it only spend what you set or will it go over to fit the schedule? That is a great question. Um, it won't overspend. So it's not um, it's not similar to maybe like a Google Ads in that way. If anybody's run Google Ads campaigns, you know, you set kind of a daily budget um, and sometimes it can go a little over. For TikTok, if you're setting a lifetime budget, um, it will stay underneath that lifetime budget. Um, same with the daily budget. It won't go more than whatever that day, that day's um, maximum is. Any other questions about TikTok that I can help answer? Awesome. Cass says, can you customize the dashboard for multiple brand identities? That is a really great question. Um, I believe they're starting to roll that out. So um, when TikTok first launched, something that made um, them a little behind, I guess, was that they didn't really have a lot in place for agencies or for people who are running ads for multiple brand identities. Um, about probably six, maybe six, five or six months ago, they started rolling out um, tools to help agencies. So now they've got business managers where you can have multiple accounts similar to a Facebook. Um, so I would guess that you could probably at this point now customize the dashboard for multiple brand identities. Um, if not, it's really easy to kind of toggle between the two or to pull reports um, in Excel that you can then compare. Noah says, do you have any recommendations for finding the best influencers to choose for advertisements? I think one issue we've had is trying to find influencers based on region. This is a really great question. Um, it's something we run into all the time with our clients. We have a lot of projects that are very localized um, by state or by region. So some recommendations here, um, definitely would recommend searching the hashtag for whatever region you're in or um, if there's a major city in that region, searching the hashtag for that. Um, also searching things to do with that region or city's name. Um, a lot of content creators that have local audiences will regularly create kind of videos about like things to do in Atlanta, things to do in Green Bay. Um, so that can be a really great way to just kind of search those regular, um, regularly used hashtags in your area. Um, or phrases, and then it's easy to then go to their profile and just confirm that they're from where you are. Um, something else that can be beneficial is just looking up different, um, maybe if there's a place that's really well known um, in your region, looking up to see who's posting about it and then going about that way. Lisa asked, 
Any concern for threats to U.S. security or U.S. brands slash products? Also heard Biden made changes to regulation of data storage on TikTok. Any insights to share? Um, so this is a totally understandable question, especially when TikTok was really first gaining ground. There was a lot of worries in terms of like security, um, data security. I would say I don't think there's really any concerns or threats. Um, they have really worked a lot to um, make it very safe, even in terms of just like your own account. Um, a lot of times you will have on the ad side of things, two-factor authentication required. Um, they're regularly monitoring your quality. Um, you also have a TikTok rep that you can reach out to with any questions at any point, um, which is really nice. But I would say right now, um, they've definitely made a lot of a lot of strides, so I wouldn't say there's any more concerns than if you're already advertising on any other social platform. Of course. Christy says, if you don't have a TikTok account for your organization, where do you go to get to the advertising pages you were just showing? Great question. So even if you do have a TikTok account for your organization, you will access TikTok ads differently. Um, I believe it's ads.tiktok.com, but if you Google TikTok advertising, it will take you to the TikTok ad website. Um, that's where you'll create a login. Um, it'll be different than your personal login, but sometimes you can connect it to your phone number still. Uh, but yeah, it's a completely different platform, which is also pretty interesting, um, definitely different than a lot of the other social media platforms. Any other questions I can help answer? Some good questions so far. Appreciate everybody um, asking. And as you mentioned at the beginning too, happy to share this stack with everyone um, so that you have it. I know there will also be a recording of this um, and you can always feel free to reach out to me as well. My LinkedIn information is here. Um, always happy to answer if you have questions after this that come up. I'm happy to help however I can.